computer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, Jenna. So I don't have to leave the screen. Can you just tell me the two different dates? So while you're holding intentions, I can do some work. Yeah, so two weeks from this Saturday will be- Just give me the numbers. June 20th. And then two weeks after that, I can't see the date from here because it's July. Let's see, one, two. So it'll be 320? Six. 620 love bug. We're in June already. I know. It's hard to believe it. 620. Yeah, we're in June. 620, 2002. <laughs> and so that would be 520, nope, 2020, 2020 <laughs> versus. Okay, thank you. And then I think the other one, yes. Okay, let's get started. Ah, all right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Today is July or June. June 6, <laughs> 2020. I know I'm already pushing the dates forward, right? Like, get through this. Um, my name is Jana Grosskost, and uh, I have a, hey Natasha, welcome. I have a blog called New Moon Manifesting, and I teach people how to manifest with the lunar cycles. I'm also, so I'm a metaphysical teacher and healer, and that's what we're going to be doing today, some healing work, some re-release work. Anytime we are working with the full moon, the period between the full moon and the next new moon is an opportunity to release. So the full moon becomes very accentuated emotionally because we have the sun in one house and the moon in another sign. And there's this dichotomy of pushing and pulling um, in all directions. So what we do with the full moon is it gives us an opportunity to um, see our progress. It helps us to understand the emotional um, elements that are holding us back from what we want. And we usually see that in a reflection of other people. So other people trigger emotionally what's taking place. So if you're feeling very emotional at this time, then it's an opportunity to look at what am I feeling and how do I shift gears and release that? Because just because we're feeling something, the last thing we want to do is suppress it and deny it. So you want to acknowledge at least what is coming up. You can journal about it. Um, how it makes you feel, what sort of core wounds that is initiating within you or activating within you, and how to release those. So ultimately you get to that place of, okay, I'm ready to release this emotion and, um, and move forward. So um, whenever we release, we want to replace. So keep that in mind. Anytime we're going through energy work, I always release something and I replace it. So for example, if I'm feeling inadequate, I want to feel valued and respected. If I'm feeling um, angry, I want to feel compassion and love. So it's kind of looking Duality. at both sides of the occasion uh, or the um, situation so that you can release and reclaim. So with the Sagittarius energy, this is the last of the fire signs in, um, in astrology. And this is the full moon. So we actually have the actual new moon in six months. So as with, um, with Sagittarius being a fire sign, fire signs are all about taking action. They're very action oriented. They're the things that get us moving. Where the air signs are kind of our thought process, we put things into action with fire signs. So this fire sign is about optimism. It's about seeing mm -hmm. the bigger picture. It's about, um, hold on, I'm gonna mute everybody. There we go. Um, it's about seeing the bigger picture. It's about looking to the future. It's related to having big ideas and how do I get them out there or take action. It's also about the higher mind. So it relates to higher education and understanding ourselves from that higher perspective and how we can, you know, what classes we need to take to get us to the next level. What do I need to learn? It also relates to philosophy and what our personal philosophy is, right? Like we're tuning into a lot of things that are transitioning within us and it's an opportunity to take stock of where we're at, what we want to hold on to and what we're ready to release. And that's what we're going to do today with the despacho. And then it also relates to um, long distance travel as well as studying foreign cultures. So it's understanding other people. 
from their perspective and um, having compassion for wherever they're at in their life, as well as using what you learn from them to integrate into your life and make yourself a better person. So um, the despacho ceremony is actually um, a Peruvian shamanic technique of um, paying homage to Mother Nature and Father Sky and bringing the elements of the earth into who we are and giving us pause to really reflect on what's taking place in our own life and again what we want to take forward with us. So I'm going to layer a bunch of different elements that have um, that have symbolism and support us in um, moving forward with whatever our next steps are. And one of the fascinating things about this, I've, I, I've only done one of these live and I did it with the mastermind group, so it's sort of my practice run. Um, but about a month ago, I really felt this need to bring these online and support my online community with them. I've been doing them in person for a very long time. I've been holding fire ceremonies at my house for, I don't know, since 2008, so 12 years. Um, they're incredibly powerful. I love doing them in person because we get to all fuse our energies together and collectively create something magnificent. And that's what my focus is, is just to bring more love and peace and harmony to the world. And so um, I'm so grateful that you're a part of this today. And I will get started. We're going to um, start with some breathing ex exercises just to get you into a centered place. <clears throat> so hopefully you're in a place that um, you can go ahead and close your eyes. But let's uh, go ahead and close your eyes and let's begin with some deep breathing, breathing in through your nose. And exhale through your mouth. And breathe in deeply all the way down to your belly. And as you exhale, release, release any tension you're holding in the neck, the shoulders, maybe move your head from side to side. And take another deep breath in through the nose. And as you exhale, release, release any tension you're holding in your chest, upper back, your abdomen, and continue to breathe deeply and rhythmically, tuning in to your breath. You're in a space that's safe and protected. We call in your guides and your ancestors to encircle you at this time. And just envision that there's a, a beautiful white gold bubble around you, providing a place of safety, security, And just imagine that as they're standing around you, they're projecting their unconditional love to you for taking this moment, this opportunity to heal yourself, to support you in moving forward and take a deep breath in. And exhale, release. And bring your awareness to your heart. Imagine there's a beautiful golden sunlight within your heart. The rays of the sun are dancing and radiating. And imagine just taking a ray of that sunlight and projecting it up through the crown of your head and up to the sun as it reaches Father Sky. And as it connects with the sun, it amplifies your ray and it comes back to you connecting back into your heart, amplifying your energy, and take a deep breath in. And exhale, release. And imagine taking another ray of sunshine, and this time projecting it down through your legs and into the earth, connecting to the center, the core of Mother Earth. And as it connects with Mother Earth, she blesses it with unconditional love. And as soon as she does that, she throws it back up through the earth, through your feet, 
and back into your heart, amplifying your energy. And take a deep breath in. And exhale, release. And realize you are the divine connection between heaven and earth. That you have a purpose in being here now. That this is a time of healing, of growth, and expansion. And take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, go ahead and open your eyes. And we will begin the despacho. So if you can see my other screen, um, I've got to figure out how to. I need a different screen so I can do this. So what I've started with is I've got base paper, just um, some architecture paper here. And I've started with, um, with some incense. These are sandalwood incense that I brought back from Bali. And what I'm basically gonna do is we're gonna layer all of this stuff on, we're gonna breathe our intentions into this despacho, and then I'm going to meditate over it after we're done with our meditation. I'll do a meditation, and then I actually burn it. So it's um, very symbolic. I see the smoke as it's rising up as an opportunity for us to release from this earthly plane. So keep in mind that anything that we create on this earthly plane, we have to release on this earthly plane. And one of the things that I see in the healing work that I do is I see each of us at the center, at the helm of two lines of, of people. And in this one line of people, we have all of our ancestors who had thoughts, feelings, and emotions and may have left this earthly plane still holding on to grudges or anger or resentments. And as such, they move to this new realm and they're no longer able to release those on this earthly plane. So I see them kind of pulling on each of our energy to say, hey, help me heal this energy. Help me heal these emotions. So if you see any ancestral patterns, and we'll clear a lot of ancestral issues today, but if you see those ancestral patterns in your own life, it's an opportunity for you to take note to say, hey, this is more than just my personal experience. This goes deeper, it cuts into your DNA and literally transforms and transfigures your DNA. So it's an opportunity to heal that. I see it like when I do energy work on people, um, the DNA looks like rungs of ladders. And when there are those broken ladders, those broken ladders are those rungs where stuff has not been resolved, those emotional wounds have not been resolved. So take this as an opportunity, this lifetime as an opportunity to heal those issues, not only for yourself, but for your ancestors. And then the other line of people I see are, um, are other lifetimes, our karmic connections that we still have, the karmic ties, the karmic bonds, the issues that we still need to resolve. So we have those elements that pull on us as well. So when I look at the wholeness of us, it's not just about us doing the healing work, but it's healing our ancestral line, which affects all of our past ancestors, as well as future generations. It also, and with the um, other lifetimes, it affects our soul's evolution. So it becomes very, um, if we can really do the healing work, it pushes us forward, it really launches us forward towards what we want. So I brought in a bunch of essential oils. Um, Father Earth, I mean, Father Sky, I use frankincense. And I just want to anoint the paper with um, bringing in the divine masculine, that it supports us in seeing our truth. It supports us in standing in our personal authority and understanding who we are as a person and honoring the divine masculine that's within each of us. The next oil that I have here is myrrh, and she takes a little while to get out because it's very, it's a resin and it's very sticky. Um, but myrrh is the element of Mother Earth. So she is bringing in all of the earth elements that support us in manifesting in physical form. There we go. Let's shake it a little bit. I'll get it out. And she supports us in honoring the divine feminine within us. So any, um, both the masculine and feminine, any issues we have with masculine and feminine energy, these two oils help support and bring us back into balance. 
The next one I want to bring in is rose oil. This is the oil of unconditional love, and I have roses that we're going to use during the despacho. So we'll just make a few little hearts on our paper here to bring in unconditional love. It is the highest vibration. And then the last one that I want to bring in for the earth element is vetiver. Vetiver is a, um, a root. It's one of those, another one of those sticky oils. It's very grounding and anchoring. So if you have any difficulty in sleeping or staying grounded and anchored, vetiver is a great oil for that. And then I'm going to add sugar because we all need more sweetness in life. So I'm going to start by creating a ring around our despacho because in a circle, everything is infinite. And then the four directions, we want to call in the winds of the north and the winds of the south, the winds of the east, and the winds of the west. So the sugar adds more sweetness to our life where we don't see sweetness. Then we want to bring in sage. And I've got sage burning also. And sage, if you all were here, I would have, I would be passing these around and you all would be breathing your intentions into it. But sage is an element that helps clear negativity and dispel negative energy. And I'm also going to bring in lemongrass because lemongrass essential oil is another oil that helps with releasing negativity. Next, we have lavender. Fresh lavender from the garden. So lavender supports our throat chakra. It helps us in feeling calming, feeling calmed and grounded so that we can um, express our true self. It also brings in the elements of earth, air, water, and fire. It's cleansing and purifying and supports us in taking direct action. We also want to bring in rice. So rice is the sustenance of life. It helps us in um, infertility and bringing in abundance. And then next we want to bring in our first layer of red wine. So with red wine, we're gonna bless our first layer with red wine. This is calling in the earth elements and the first layer. So um, it really supports us in recognizing that for us to truly manifest, we have to have this connection between heaven and earth that the earth is supporting all of our needs, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, and financially. And the more we can tune into that unconditional support and honoring and being grateful for it, the more we receive back out. And then we have some of my favorites, Sauvignon Blanc. I live in the heart of wine country, so <laughs> we gotta bring all the, the natural elements here. The white wine, we call upon the mountain. This is to bless us in creating that strong foundation, right? We want to be that mountain that is unshakable and unmovable. And to do that, we have to believe in ourselves. We have to boost our confidence and to recognize that, you know, really the mantra, I am enough. And that will support you in creating um, what it, whatever it is that you want to manifest in this life. So the next part that we do, I have these bay leaves. I'm going to have to move this a little bit over. All right, so these are called kintus. So I take three bay leaves and I'm going to take a white rose petal and a red rose petal. And what I do with this is I breathe in your intentions or my intentions or whomever's intentions. And in doing that, we're setting the stage. So if there's something specific that you want to release, you can either drop it in the chat or unmute um, yourself or raise your hands. I'm having a hard time seeing because I've got myself pinned on video. So it might be easier where we don't have a huge group that you, um, <sighs> that you unmute yourself. 
Um, does anyone have anything that they want to release with this specific full moon? Anything coming to mind? I'll start. I'm going to breathe in the intention of harmony, bringing in harmony to um, our, each of our own personal lives, as well as harmony in humanity. Hi, Jana. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> so good to see you. Thank you. You're okay, welcome. I want to reach. This, I want to release procrastination. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good one. Okay. Releasing procrastination. And all of the self-sabotage that creates, right? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Beautiful. Somebody else. Hi, Jana. Hey. Um, I would like to, uh, could I release two things or is it just one? Um, go ahead and tell me. <laughs> um, uh, anger and, and rage. Excellent. Um, I'm glad that you brought that up. So I have a crystal bowl here that I actually will put the entire despacho in. So it's not little. <laughs> This is my crystal bowl, so I can put stuff in it. So this is a D sharp. And what a D sharp is, where it hits the body is the liver. And the liver is where we store anger and rage in Chinese medicine. And it is, um, the liver and the gallbladder are the elements between heaven and earth. So um, it's going to be very important, especially with this despacho, to release all of those elements. So thank you for bringing that up, Teji. Next. This is Ani. I would like to release being scattered and unfocused. All right, releasing being scattered and bringing in clarity. Bring in clarity, bring in clarity. Do I have an oil for that? All right, who's next? Can I go next? Please. Morning, Jana. Hi, Francilla. Um, hi, I want to release fear. Cool. Fear of, um, yeah. There's so much fear in me. I didn't realize that until now, until right now. Wow. That's the nice thing about doing an event like this, especially with other people, is it's amazing what will crop up, right, when you give it the space to express itself. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Who else? I go. Can you guys hear me? Yes, love. Okay. Um, I would like to release the the like the spirit or the energetic vibration of poverty and lack. Thank you. We need to all release the poverty consciousness and scarcity that we've experienced in this and other lifetimes and our ancestors. And I'm yes. actually going to bring in. I'm actually gonna bring in an essential oil. I'm gonna bring in Siberian fir. So Siberian fir, Douglas fir, um, black spruce, these oils help release ancestral patterns and issues. And we all have scarcity mentality and to various degrees. And it's how we tune into it and tie into it that actually ultimately helps us create more abundance in your life. Um, in about a month, I'm gonna be offering, start offering a nine week course on releasing scarcity and fear, especially around our ancestors, ancestors and stepping into our true power. So um, keep an eye out for that. You can find, yes. find out on Good Vibe Money and that will support you in ultimately releasing that. So thank you for thank you. bringing that up. All right, who's next?
Hey, Janet, Jason's had his hand up for a while. Sorry, love bug. I'm, yeah, I've got everybody on micro screen. Yes, dear. Um, I can tell you the adage, doctor, heal thyself. I sometimes wonder. And for me, I would just like to focus on a two pronged head of sadness. I am, I thought I had released an old love that did me wrong when I was in my 20s and I felt like I did the work. And it seems only now I'm at the next level and I haven't quite dropped the fuselage off this rocket so that I can take off. So my heart is still sad. Mm -hmm. And then with all that's happening in the world right now, with all of these deaths that I'm helping people cross over with and the racial horse shit, I am so sad for everyone and myself. So I feel a macrocosmic sadness and then I feel a microcosmic sadness. Mm -hmm. And the sadness is crippling to me and my spirit. And I seem to be holding on to it with no logic, with no discipline. It's a very good point. And, and we often do hold on to things thinking that is serving us and it doesn't, right? It's the only person that really is hurting is ourselves. So thank you for bringing that to light. I think you all got us on that one, Jason. Thank you. Um, what I know okay. is that when men are angry and we take the face and the mask of anger off underneath that for men is fear. Yes. When women, when women are angry and they take that mask off, they're sad. It seems that the androgyny within my soul has been focused on sad. Uh, I no longer feel angry, I feel somewhat apathetic. Can I, can we respond to one another? This is kind of my first time, but I wanted to say something to Jason. Yeah, absolutely. I'm also going to bring in the essential oil black pepper because it supports us in the unmasking. It helps us in seeing the truth of who we are and how we're contributing to whatever's taking place in our own lives. So yes, please go ahead and share. Um, so first, Jason, I want to say immense gratitude to you for doing that work for the collective. Um, I'm, I am a, so I'm a Scorpio sun, Capricorn rising, Aries moon. So I'm, I'm always doing the work. In fact, it got to a point where I had to tell my ancestors, like, okay, just equip me and protect me and guide me like i'm i see i'm gonna have to do the work so okay you know but i mean sometimes i do fight it and it is a surging and it is overwhelming and so um you know we got to figure out how to transmute it you know we wouldn't be tasked with it if we didn't have divine support and so tap into that and i feel like that's what we're doing right now with this ritual i love it i'm so glad i'm here for this one and especially with the cosmic energies with the eclipse and everything that's going on, you know, um, you know, kind of process it, you know, in the way that you do. And like I said, thank you for doing that work because everybody is not able um, and definitely figure out what transmuting it looks like, you know, so that's all. Jenna, I wrote down black pepper. Jenna, I wrote down black pepper for the unmasking, but I didn't get what you were using, utilizing to heal the heart, to heal the pain, the sadness. Could you repeat that part? What do so to heal the heart, that's rose essential oil. That's the oil of unconditional love. And I, I'm sorry, I don't know your name, LT. Is there something specific that you want to release or integrate? Um, 
No, so like I said earlier, just kind of like this poverty spirit, and it really it, it is ancestral because I see the you know opportunities and avenues in front of me, and you know there's some procrastination there, there's some fear there. It's kind of everything everybody said. I think um, is you know, and I'm just like touching and agreeing with that. Um, but ultimately there is, I, you know, I want to heal that aspect of my bloodline that feels like unless you like work hard for it or, you know, just like that I'm not deserving to walk in abundance, you know, there's like this blockage. And even if it's me, you know, I just want to get out of the way of the higher version of myself manifesting here. Yeah, you'll have to join our money mastery program. That's going to be okay. a huge healing opportunity. Okay, thank you. I'll, look, yeah. I'll definitely look into it. Thank you. Yeah, check out goodvibemoney.com. Get on the list. I should have a, a page for it up this week so we can get ready to rock. So thank you. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thanks, love bug. Um, who's next? Hey, Jana. This is Cheryl. Um, you know, with all the change that you know I've been going through, um, I think the, the word that comes up is I want to release the insecurity. Um, the insecurity around um, what's next for me in terms of work, what's next for me in terms of, you know, really feeling, getting re, re-rooting here, I guess, mm -hmm. rooting here in a new and more meaningful way um it's the insecurity and it covers you know the about the personal sense of of worthiness the you know financial insecurity the insecurity about knowing what to do next or how to do it it's, it's been coming up around um putting my resume together um after one of those resume companies pretty much trashed what I've been sending out <laughs> so um and we're also going to bring Jennifer Berry for you and for everybody because Jennifer Berry um helps dispel fear and we yeah. need to release fear to restore faith and and I know that it's it all boils down to fear or love but there's there's that certain quality of that insecurity um that just you know like i'm freaking pardon my french people i'm too old for this shit <laughs> okay no you're not you're very young <laughs> you got a long long life to live you got a lot of shit to do let's just get it done may i interrupt please um cheryl jason do you still have my email yes all right, so uh, just a sidebar, I need you to hear this. Uh, so for 20 years, in the beginning of my life, I was an opera singer. And as an opera singer, we did not sling hash or waiter because of our voices. So we became temps. I became temp in the financial districts uh, in, in many, many different venues. One of my jobs, long-term jobs, is that I worked for a headhunter. Oh, excuse me, we don't use that word anymore. Uh, well, you know what I mean. Yeah, recruiter. And I was uh, trained in resumes. And what I want to tell you about some of these places is that they're making up shit. They don't know. So I want you to send me your resume and I want you to send Jana your resume. And both of us will look at it and give you feedback. Be very careful to give your power up and over to some of these miscreants who only want money. Yep, that's the same thing okay. too, is they want money. They're going to trash it that's, because they want money. That's all I'm going to say, okay? Be very, very careful. It's like you go, like when women go to the, uh, uh, something happens with their car and, it, and the guy comes out and says, oh, it's your transmission. We'll put a new one in for you. When all they did was go in and put sandpaper on the connectors of your battery so that the energy can flow again and screw you. So be careful. That's all I'm saying. Thank yep. you. I agree. Absolutely. Um, Amen. So yeah. one of the things that's coming up as you guys were talking was transforming pain. You know, we all experience emotional wounds for a reason. 
And it's an opportunity us, for us to learn and grow from that lesson, to no longer stay victimized, but turning that pain into power. So really embracing your superpowers. All right. Hey, Cheryl. Yes, yes, Cheryl, it's Kathleen. Hey, Kathleen. Hey. So um, what I was going to say is, you know, you know how my story with all my job hunting and everything. I will say um, from the recruiters, the feedback I did get when I did get feedback like that was that I basically wasn't asking for enough money. Um, and once I learned that, then I, then I started, you know, reevaluating it. But I was also going to say, um, you, I'll, I'll, if you want, I could look at your resume also. I'm abundantly blessed with input. Thank you. Absolutely. Of course. All right, and Jenna, Casey put in the chats, I don't know if you see it, um, yeah. <laughs> increasing trust in self and others, in herself and others. Thank you for So I just want to make sure that, yeah, I'm not, that, I'm that not got tracking the. I'm not tracking the chat, yeah. so thank you. All right, who's next? Yeah. And even if you've gone, if something else has come up, because we're a small enough group, feel free to chime in. Jana, it's Tracy. Hi, Tracy. Hello. Um, I need to release self-doubt. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> yeah, that's a big one. Jana, I had a question. Um, when you said, uh, what did you use for uh, anger and rage? It was that bowl, but the, what, what? The note of it is a D sharp. So if I'm, if I look at a musical scale, um, the the D sharp hits just above the solar plexus, but below the heart. If you start with the bass being, um, you know, the root chakra being an A. So if I look at each one of those and it's like, okay, this is, this is where this hits. And the, the, um, the oil or uh, what did you use or did you not use anything? I missed it. I did not, but the oil that I would recommend is geranium. And geranium is really good at detoxifying on a physical level. It detoxifies um the liver and on an emotional level it helps um dispel that anger and you know one of the things that i find in the healing process um is we learn through duality and so for us to learn a lesson we have to have a choice on how to respond differently for example when my kids were really little i was a single mom i was asking for patience and i thought oh good i'll Pray for patience and the universe will grant me patience. Well, what it granted me was the opportunity to learn to respond differently. So instead of responding out of frustration and impatience, that I had that choice, that three seconds that everybody has, where instead of falling into the old patterns, that I chose to, um, to choose, I chose peace, right? I chose to be patient with the process. So keep that in mind as you're going through it, even though you're asking for something or how do I resolve it, you're gonna be given a lot more opportunities to practice what it is you want to create. So we're gonna breathe that in too. Is there anything else in the chat, Cheryl, that I need to be aware of? All right, who else? What else is coming up? He heaviness. Heaviness is good. One of the things that I was just looking at because I made some notes is a, a deeper understanding, right? And the heaviness that we're experiencing because we can transmute that heaviness to light. And I'm actually going to bring in eucalyptus, which is the um, the oil or the herb of wellness. 
This thing smells amazing when I burn it, just FYI. I wish y'all were here. <laughs> Can't wait when we can get back and actually do these live again. All right, who's next? So this is on me again, and with so many possibilities of where to put our slash my attention to create change I want to see, we want to see, to help me to discern my path, a lot of words. Perfect. Oh, thanks, Cheryl. Yeah, she's, I, I've got my phone on also for the Despacho. So if you're on an iPhone, you can scroll if you can't see it on your screen. Um, but it's, it's pretty amazing. All right, who's next? I'm going to call on community. So first of all, I want to say thank you for being here on a Saturday afternoon or morning, depending on where you're at. Um, but this is an opportunity for us to create the conversations that support building true understanding of each other and building a true community. So thank you. Jana, quickly, what was the white fur, AKA Christmas tree oil for again? It's actually Siberian fur. Um, that is good for ancestral issues, healing patterns. All the tree oils are very grounding and anchoring. Um, so, and tree oils on a physical level support us in, you know, they have antibacterial properties and antifungal properties and, um, but they do help us feel supported, anchored, grounded. Roots, right? Roots growing into the ground, um, but specifically the fir and spruce help with healing our DNA and our ancestral patterns. Let's just breathe that in. All right, who's next? I'm sorry to uh, be talking so much, but uh, from the time that I started my journey as a master metaphysician until now, it seems that our God, for lack of a better term, whoever she is, has an interesting way of teaching faith. It seems that all of us in the physical world, I had once a Tibetan monk give me his prayer shawl and say, just remember something, young man. The walk of a master metaphysician is a truly difficult one. And he smiled and said, especially in the beginning. Now I never knew what he meant by that. And then I worked with the dark side uh, in Santeria to understand it because I, I, I was too much yin, too much positive horse shit, you know, that touchy-feely crap that you and I don't like. I had to figure out how to work with the duality so that I could understand. So I, I ended up studying some of this, uh, how shall I say, low-level energy. But to my question. I have been plagued with scarcity and therefore the manifestation of lower back trauma. You and I, as Capricorns, L4, L5, little piggies, as you called them, rubbing up against each other. Um, there are times when it's debilitating and I cry out to God, 
cursing her. And then, of course, I get over my Greek passionate self, and it breaks. The pain breaks. And it's almost like that old Milton Berle joke. I went to the doctor and I said, Doc, it hurts when I do this. And he said, Don't do this. And so I, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm no disrespect to anybody, but I'm really fucking over it. I'm over the pain, the physical pain. So I need to release uh, this lesson of physical pain. Okay. And that is one great way the universe gets our attention is to put us into a place of pain, right? So we have- What do you to, use for it? Um, honestly, what's coming up is wintergreen. Yeah, wintergreen, wintergreen is um, the essential oil of surrender. Because when we yeah, have- Yeah, but does it come from a tree or a root? Uh, it's a tree, I believe. Um, I thought so, go ahead. It, pain is a physical teacher, right? It's debilitating. It forces you to stop in your tracks. Um, I'm in chronic pain. I can't lift my arm beyond, above this right now. This has been going on for seven months. I'm like, teach me the lesson. I want mobility back in my arm. Um, what was the what was the oil you used? Uh, wintergreen. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So when we have physical pain, it's an opportunity for us to not feel victimized, but to recognize that each part of our body is related to an energetic or an emotional issue. So we need to learn what's taking place within us and how we can in our mind, in our body, shift our vibration so that we are aligned with what it is that we do want. And that's a tough one, right? Because we get caught in the pain. We can, there's people that use pain as, um, as an opportunity to get attention or an excuse for not reaching their full potential. Um, every single day I wake up and it's like, okay, what hurts on my body, right? Like my, I can't move my shoulders in the morning, my hips hurt, my legs hurt, everything is hurting until I get moving and then I'm fine. So it's just a reminder of there's still stuff that I'm resolving and healing right now and then the, the pain will dissipate. What else does anyone want to share? So we're transmuting pain again. Um, what do you want to release? I would like to share. Yes, please. Um, I would like to release the belief that my words and my action caused harm and i want to choose to decide to believe and accept that my words and actions actually heal mm, i love that and it's coming from that place of authenticity right and recognizing when we are speaking when we are feeling that how impactful that is on other people our words can be you know, the, the tool that lifts somebody up or the knife that cuts them down. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. All right, what else? I'm actually gonna call in protection and setting healthy boundaries, right? So that we we value ourselves enough to honor our divinity, set healthy boundaries, and maintain, um, maintain our personal integrity. And I'm going to bring in, um, so Clove Essential Oil is calling to me now to add her in here. And Clove is an essential oil that supports um, third chakra, so solar plexus where our personal power is located. Um, even using it will help create this energetic barrier between you and other people. All right, loves, what else? Hey, Jana, I want to call in gratitude. Oh. 
Thank you, girl. Um, especially for, during the times when it, it feels more challenging. <laughs> well, if we only did gratitude when things were easy, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, exactly. It's it's easy to say thank you when you've got a million dollars in the bank. <laughs> exactly. And gratitude uh, just, is that just, vibration just, that raises, you know, lifts us up. Just, just raising, you. yeah. Just want to call in gratitude because, you. you know, um, just with a nod, you know, we can all breathe today. So I'm grateful for that. Thank you. I'm going to call in um, releasing victimization, releasing feeling victimized. We all have experiences in life that um, hold us back. And those experiences weren't meant for us to stay focused on the pain, but actually learn to heal from it. So when we stay in that victim role, we do not honor our true divinity. Who else? What else? We have 36 of these and we're getting down there. So um, I'm going to add one more, Jana. I heard this really fabulous woman named um, Jane Elliott speak um, to Waylon Lewis, who runs Elephant Journal. She's an 86 year old woman and she's a badass. And she called out. Um, the need to release the, the lies we tell ourselves um, about, uh, you know, skin color and race and all this stuff. It's, I won't go into it in detail, but if you look up Jane Elliott, she's absolutely awesome sauce. But I want to call, I want to release the lies about um, the way we set up these artificial because they are, there's, there's a great PBS documentary on these illusions about, you know, our, our, our largest organ in our body. Um, so I wanna, I wanna release the lies we've been told or taught or that we tell ourselves. And I wanna call in um, the shared humanity um, because she talked about, you know, uh, the only race being homo sapiens um, and that the you know melanin is just melanin yeah I mean I know I'm, I'm not trying to be flippant but if if any of us with a paler color had had started this this the species near the equator we'd all be dead there wouldn't be a species yeah yeah um so i just i really thought that she spoke um you know she's someone who sounds like she's so i want to call in speaking truth to power that's it i want to release lies that we tell ourselves and call in speaking truth to power okay there i fight it took me a, mi a minute to articulate the calling in but <laughs> i got there and what I did is I added more frankincense in because frankincense is the oil that helps us dispel the lies that we tell ourselves. And the lies become our truth, right? When we tell ourselves something yeah. over and over again, it's, it's our version of the truth, but it's not universal truth. So um, let's actually breathe that in, that we're bringing in universal truth in our own lives, that, that we are receptive to universal truth. And I'll tell you, when I, hold on, um, <laughs> when you ask to see your truth, be careful at what shows up. When you ask to see, oh, how am I contributing to this situation or this person or, you know, this job or whatever it is, when you ask to see how am I showing up with this, wow, it's like your eyes are open, the filters are off you see exactly how you're participating in perpetuating the situation or making it better. So um, frankincense, again, is one of those essential oils that helps you 
in dispelling the truth and bringing in, um, bringing in truth. All right, I've got a few more. Anyone that any, anyone wants to release, anything that you want to reclaim, this is the time to do it. I want to reclaim. Oh, go ahead, Teggy. Uh, I want to reclaim love. Oh, love it. Cheryl? I want to reclaim I create creativity. <gasps> Good one. For all of us. In yeah, the way we approach we're doing everything. for one of us. This is taking place for all of us, just so y'all know. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right. That's gotta be clear. Yeah, I actually took a class and we were talking about what we wanted to manifest. And it actually manifested for all of us, whether it was a new car or a vacation or whatever. We that power of intention is so incredible. What else do y'all want to reclaim? Janet. Passion. Passion. Love it. I would like to um, reclaim, you know, pleasure. Just receiving and oh. giving a pleasure. Good one. And I would like wait, to wait, 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 wait. Wait, oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm not, I can't put it together fast enough. All right, here we go, pleasure. <laughs> okay, now, go. Trust. <laughs> Good one. Trust, trust yourself, trusting your higher power, trusting the process. Yeah, it's hard when, you know, we have situations in life where we've lost faith. So trust is big. What else do you want to reclaim? Balance. Oh, balance is good. And if there's something that, um, the last one that I do, if there's something that we haven't said and maybe you don't want to say it out loud, I'm just going to hold the space that you breathe into your phone or your computer or whatever, of whatever that is. So um, we're about there. All right, anyone else want to say something out loud? Jason's got his hand right up. Thanks, love bug. Go ahead. Um, I've been writing copious notes and channeling while you have been talking. Well, of course you have. I wouldn't expect anything less. And I don't mean to monopolize, but I would, and I would, uh, you, you, you hit on something that is a big deal for me. Uh, one of my mentors was a man by the name, is a man by the name of Martin, uh, just so that everybody can know the last name, Seligman, S-T-L-I-G-M-A-N. And he was elected in 1998 as elected to be the, uh, the president of the American Psychological Association. Being a Capricorn, I refuse uh, metaphysica without a basis in the third dimension. Now, I don't know if that means anything to anyone else, but I know it means something to you. You were referring to clothes and personal power. I would entertain everybody to go to Martin Seligman's site, which is called AuthenticHappiness.com. And especially for, where's my girl, Cheryl? Cheryl, there are many, many uh, tests you can take on this site to find out what you're best suited for. Here's the lowdown. They found out, God bless Freud, God bless, you know, uh, Jung, but these modalities of psychology stopped working. And so this man is referred to as the father of positive psychology. Working from people's strengths instead of, oh, you've got blah, blah, blah. What he did was focus on the strength to bring the people up, yep. to accentuate, accentuate their gift. I would also entertain everyone to read a book called What Happy People Know by Dan Baker, who was a protege of Seligman. 
And he wrote something very simple that you started to touch on. And it was called the verbs. So I'm gonna hit you with a lot of stuff at this moment, Jana, so get ready. The way in which people rob themselves of personal power is by, now pay attention, speaking a certain speak. When you think and put forward in actual vibration, you manifest. Not just sitting around and, you know, I mean, no. So, Jana, the four ways in which people rob themselves of personal power is through the verbs, V, victim. We already touched that, right? Mm -hmm. E, something we haven't because we all have ego. So here it goes. Entitlement. Well, I deserve this because I went to school and I have three degrees. Well, I put my time in. That might all be true. But the second you think this, and speak it, then the universe responds with more entitlement, which robs you of your personal power. So the next thing I would like to release is my ego bullshit of entitlement. I think that's good for all of us. And I'd like to know what you're using for entitlement. That's a good question. I'm gonna have to look at that one because uh, um, off the top of my head, I can't think of an oil that would support the next, uh, the next thing R is not resentment, but rescue. When is this man going to come and save me from my... <laughs> yeah, or we're better yet... Off. We're rescuing ourselves. Or better yet, when is this job going to come along and rescue me? These things might be true, but if you speak it and think it, you're screwed. So what do we use for <sighs> our good old friend rescue hoping that something from the outside will come on in some spirit some blah, 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 bullshit how do we rescue ourselves what should we use honestly elang lang comes up so thank you lang lang elang lang y l a n g y l a n g this is the oil of um Restoring childlike wonder, right? Like our when we connected to our hopes and dreams when we were children and how to bring those into the forefront. I'm also going to bring in peppermint. So peppermint is the oil of an is the oil of a buoyant heart. So it's uplifting, it's invigorating. It also helps us breathe in life. Because most of the time we're breathing just in the upper third of our lungs. And we need to be taking those deep breaths throughout the day. It's one reason I love oils um, to support us with that. So, yes. The last one in the word verb, which I would really en enjoin everyone to write that word on a rubber band, put it on your, your wrist and ask yourself every day, to what level am I entertaining these thoughts of victim entitlement rescue? And the last one is one of my favorites. Blame. Well, I'm this way because of you. And this happened to you. Blame. How do we get rid of it? That's a, that's a great question. That's um, definitely something that is a process. Um, seeing where we're laying blame on circumstances, on our age, on where we're at, on our job, whatever, it does keep us locked in that victim role. So thank you for sharing that, Jason. The last thing I would like to leave you with on this subject is a very important quote that kind of turned me on my ear when I was younger. Mr. Seligman said, just as the good life is something that is beyond the pleasant life, the meaningful life is beyond the good life. Oh. That's it. Mm -hmm. Very good. Hey, hey, Jana, if you have any forgive there, you might want to put in um, forgive 
around blame, releasing blame. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, I don't have it right here, but I'll grab it before I actually fold up the, the entire despacho. So thank you for making that recommendation. So the last kintu that I have, I want you to just close your eyes for a second. Take a deep breath. I want you to focus right between your eyes, just as if with your eyes closed that you're looking up, your gaze is lifted. And the first word that comes to your mind, I want you to breathe that into your phone, your computer, whatever you're sitting in front of right now. And I'm receiving that barrage of words right now, breathing them in, holding space for your intentions, for your highest good. I'm also going to breathe in or bring in um, blue tansy essential oil. This stuff really is blue. So it's amazing for your skin, but you don't want to put it on before you have an event like this. Your skin is actually smurf blue. The phone uh, cut out. Blue what? Blue tansy, T-A-N-S-Y. It's a, a form of Roman chamomile or chamomile. Um, it's Moroccan tansy or Moroccan chamomile. Um, blue tansy is the oil of inspired action. So one thing that I've done, and I'll actually um, utilize that challenge when we go into our money mastery course, is using blue tansy. I have people apply it to their big toe for 30 consecutive days because it takes on a life of its own. It creates so much inspired action that in 30 days, my life completely transformed. So um, if you have questions about these oils or other things that maybe we weren't able to discuss during this, please reach out to me personally. We can do a session, 30 minute session to talk about what's coming up with you physically and emotionally and what oils will support you. So now that we have all of our kin twos, hopefully you can see this on your screen. If not, scroll over on um, got an iPhone. We're gonna add our next layers. We're gonna add more sugar. Because it looks like a slamming beautiful Christmas wreath. I know, isn't it gorgeous? And when it burns, it smells so amazing. So more sugar for sweetness. We want to bring in um, a seashell, which has sand in it, apparently. So um, a sand dollar with the star. We're going to bring in Star Anise for the Divine Masculine and Feminine, the Divine Masculine and Feminine within each of us, that we are able to embrace all elements of our divinity and honor both our Divine Masculine and our Divine Feminine. We also are bringing in... Jenna, some of us are taking really good notes. What was that last thing you put in? You gotta, you gotta give us a second, we're writing here. Star Anise. Thank you. So it's a, I found it in the herb section. Then we are bringing in a gold and silver bead. So the golden bead is for the sun. The silver bead is for the moon. The sun represents our personality and how we put ourselves out there. The moon represents our inner world and our emotional world. Then we are bringing in our gold and silver cord. So when I do energy work with people, I see silver and gold cords connecting us to heaven and earth. We have our gold cord and our silver cord. And our candles. So I've got gold candles to represent the rays of the sun. Look at that. So beautiful. I know. We're going to do this live again in person <laughs> and have some big party afterwards. And then we're going to bring if in. If you don't have the candles, can you use glitter? Just joking. Sorry. Um, I'd use, 
I wouldn't use glitter glitter just because there's plastic in it. Right. I'm joking. We will be located in Santa Barbara, California. <laughs> where our event will be. So I want to bring in candy sprinkles for all the elementals that support us. I also have silver sprinkles. Bringing in more light. And that's what we're trying to do with this whole process is learning how for us to hold more light and to, for us to hold more light, we have to be able to ground ourselves and connect with the earth. We're bringing in chocolate. Chocolate is an adaptive. Yeah. Chocolate can elevate you when um, you're feeling down. It can also calm you down. So when people say I'm going for chocolate, make sure it's high quality and um, over 60%. Uh, black licorice for protection. I actually found black licorice, Cheryl. <laughs> and if you, Yay. if you and Sharon were here, it would be gone. I know, it would be. <laughs> what happened to the black licorice? The I know. Wait, that was part of the, the process. <laughs> I don't know. Now, let's bring in our lima beans. Lima beans represent power and the creative power that lies within each of us. Hmm. It also calls in um, synchronicities. Um, we have garbanzo beans for protection. Almost like lunch, right? Like we could pretty much eat this. We have lentils they represent abundance of the earth. We have red beans representing um, emergence, such as in the spring. So we are all in that mode of, of springing forth in a different capacity from going through this. We have peanuts, which represent the old trees and the plant people. We have cranberries, maybe. We have cranberries that support, um, sorry for the crackling support our personal gardens and our native areas and what is grown in those areas. We have raisins for the spirit of our ancestors and their healing. We have animal crackers for all the animals of the earth. These would be all gone if for me. These are my thing. <laughs> Paul, which is for protection, healing, and expansion. Um, we have paper money, ensuring our success and the success of the spacho. We have red yarn, tying in, tying all of our prayers together in this process. Um, we have feathers for flight, that all of our wishes and dreams take flight. And we have, what else? Oh, we have sweet grass, which brings in more sweetness. Jenna, for the red feathers, I mean, for the feathers, is there a color? I mean, does it make a difference if we yeah. use a black crow feather or a red uh, cardinal? Does it have a vibration that, no? Something that's symbolic to you. In fact, I like finding elements and run across various elements that support, um, you know, it messages from spirit is what I call them. And then we have 
the letters. So um, usually I have alphabet pasta, but I don't have any anymore and I can't find it right now. Um, so I brought in letters and I brought in the letters of love. So these are just little wooden letters. And then we bless this with the, the sun, the moon, the stars, the winds of the north, the winds of the south, the winds of the east, and the winds of the west to support all of us in our personal growth and healing. Whew. Questions or comments? It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. I know it's a it's it's a work of art. It's so much fun. I just wanted to take a minute, and um, I don't even know what time it is. I can't see my clock. Um, and just take a minute and breathe over this. So go ahead and close your eyes. Think about the intentions that you've set. Think about the healing that's taking place. Feel into your body. Use your breath to encircle any places of heaviness, any, any heaviness you may feel around your heart, maybe your gut. Maybe there's heaviness in your head and trying to figure out the next step. Just use your breath, breathing into the moment holding the space of unconditional love for yourself. Recognize that you are being held in the space of unconditional love, that your ancestors and guides are encircling you at this moment, holding hands, projecting their love towards you. And with the release of this despacho, with this process is supporting you in transmuting any pain, trauma, suffering that you may be experiencing at this time. It's literally a reboot of your system. It's defragmenting you. In the places where you have felt cracked in your life, that they are now being filled with the golden light of unconditional love from your creator. That those cracks are being smoothed over, making you whole. And just imagine all those parts of you, all the pain, all the places where you felt victimized or given your power away, that you're calling all of those parts of you back. Just like when you have dropped something and it shattered, you've dropped a bowl and it's shattered and all the pieces have gone out and everywhere. And you're calling all of those pieces back, pulling you into that centered place, seeing each of those fissures being healed with unconditional love. And take a deep breath in. And exhale, release. And with the fire, there's a transmutation taking place, a transformation for you. That you're here for a reason, you're releasing the past, you're stepping into your future. And recognize that over the next couple of days, you're going to be very open and allow yourself to sit with your emotions Observe what's taking place without reaction. Take time to journal. Honor whatever it is you need to do to keep yourself in this grounded, centered place. And take a deep breath in. And exhale, release. And when you feel your processing is complete, go ahead and open your eyes.
and recognize that with this solstice, or the, uh, um, not solstice, that's next time, with this particular eclipse, it's a portal that's opening you up to deeper healing and launching your programs forward. Eclipses moves us forward in a faster way. So we have the lunar eclipse that took place yesterday. We have the solar eclipse in two weeks. And two weeks after that, with the full moon, we will have another lunar eclipse. So this four-week portal is going to be very huge for new ideas, taking new action, connecting with the right people, honoring yourself, releasing deep emotional wounds. All of those things are a culmination of the work that you are personally doing. Because nobody else can do the healing work for you. It's up to you to do that inner work. You can have guides, you can have situations like this that give you ideas, but don't give your power away by tuning into somebody else as, as them being your guru. You are your own guru. You are the person that is healing yourself and make sure that you're honoring that part of you that you do have all the tools that you need to heal, to grow, to transform, and to become the person that you really want to become. So as you're going throughout the next couple of weeks, if you have questions or comments, things that are coming up, please let me know anything in particular. Does anyone have any questions or comments that you want to share um, just in general? I can unmute everybody. Whoops. All right, you're unmuted. If you want to say anything, if anything specific is coming up. Jana, this is, uh, this is really amazing. Um, this is I'm my- so glad you got to experience it. It's fun, isn't it? This is my very first time ever uh, experiencing something like this. Like, I'm, like, it's just, I don't know. I don't think I would have been ready like a year ago or three months ago. Or it's just, um, it's kind of crazy how I meet you, but I'm going to stop saying crazy. <laughs> divine, um, divine timing, right? Divine timing. Well, and even in tuning into your energy, Teji, you just feel so much more grounded and anchored right now. That'll be interesting to see what grows because we have to have that grounding and anchoring for us to grow up and beyond. So, thank, you. thank you for joining us. This is fun. Anyone so else? I just want to share this fuchsia blossom with you because I've been looking at it the whole, the whole time. This fuchsia Sorry. blossom here. Absolutely. And there's like a bunch of them on this plant. And it was the first thing that I did for the roommate that is, um, welcomed me when I had no place to, uh, to land when I moved to Pittsburgh. And it's just, I, I don't know. I love this flower. <laughs> so I just wanted to share that with you because that's, that's kind of how this all felt was like, wow. You know, it just unfolded into this amazing thing. And, you know, the rest of the plant doesn't, doesn't look like much. But, man, when these flowers pop, it's amazeballs. You're gorgeous. Uh, Jason, no. you have a card on your face. So as a gift, I thought I would pull one card with respect to this fire moon. Love it. And I have written down several small notes and questions of further information I would like. Would you like to hear those questions after the program so yes. that you can put them up on your website? Sure. Okay. Um, this card immediately came up when I was sitting here meditating and I pulled up the two of wands. Can you see what is engulfing these gorgeous Corinthian Greek columns? Like um, fire. Hold on, let me it, is, it is in fact fire. Okay, now we can see now, it. It is in fact fire and this red physical, uh, you have a theme running, which is dualities. Oh, and yes. I hope on your website you I educate as to why these dualities are here and why they res we respond to them. However, I will continue. 
this is the duality. This is you on the physical and you in the spiritual. It is fiery. But notice that the mandala around it is of what we call from ancient Egypt, the blue fire of spirituality, of what? Perfect and undoubting faith. Do you, it is what is represented. <laughs> so if you study the very- up, right? <laughs> no. So if you study the very first uh, origins of the tarot, as I have, uh, before it got all screwed up in the 1400s with people's bullshit, um, and before these 20 something cards got put into the regular playing cards, this is the duality. Pay attention to the duality. It is going to be physical first, first chakra. Get down into it. And then perfect faith that makes it happen. And so this is the card for you, the two of wands, which I believe is perfectly uh, suited for your moon. Uh, interestingly enough, um, Fabulous. I would love to know on your I would love to know on your website what you feel the significance of the four winds are. I would also like to bring into light that red wine was used at the Last Supper, and it was Cabernet Sauvignon. If you're interested, that's what I want to do. I picked both Sauvignons, <laughs> Sauvignon Blanc. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I would please also ask uh, that for the layman including myself, who have uh, a musical background, that you please list the chakras and the tones corresponding. Okay, yeah, that's in my book. I think it's also, I think it's interesting that we have a Christmas tree, which is a white fur and or something else. And what is interesting is that if you have lung problems, the first thing an old metaphysician will say is go into the pine forest. Yes. It is from the lungs and we and breathing that we're able to get this grounding. I I love your duality of the golden beads, which is masculine and the sun, silver beads, the moon. Again, silver and quartz. The only thing I was wonder uh, I'd like to add is as a feng shui master, the red yarn that you use, the ancients believed it needs to be in an increment of nine inches. Okay. Nine is a very special number, and I think you can uh, elaborate uh, on that, of course. Um, and what else did I write? Oh, ladies, please be careful with wearing white stones, diamonds. You got diamonds? Take them off. You got clear crystals? Take them off. All they are is amplifiers. So if you're feeling shitty, it's going to make you feel shitty -er. Men, be careful with the red stones. It's just going to make you mad and angry. The last thing is, why on your website, I'd like to know, does the moon rule our emotions? How does it affect our humors? I think people need to know that. There's a reason why they're called lunatics. I happen to be bipolar. I work hard at it to get rid of the very highs and the very lows that do not serve me. So. I, those are the things that I'd like to know on your website. Da, 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 da. So Cheryl, back to your question. Women wearing white, it amplifies whatever you're feeling. So if you're not feeling in a good place, then it's not a good one to be wearing. And men wearing red, it just amplifies um, rage and all of that. Going back to your question. Just be like a New Yorker and wear black. <laughs> yeah. Black swords out, right? So when the moon rules, let me just run quick because um, I forget. I've been doing new moon for 12, 13 years. So our emotions are ruled by the fluids in our body. Emotion is energy in motion, and it should move through our body easily. The challenge is that an emotion comes in, we go into fear, and we hold on to it, right? Because the fear is, I don't want to feel this way again, so I'm just going to suppress it. Because we don't, you know, we, it goes back to our childhood. We didn't know how to deal with emotions. So when you look at the moon, the moon rules the ocean tides. And our body is 70% water. So when the moon is at its peak and its highest point, that's when the tides are the highest, it also has that gravitational pull on the water in our body, making us more emotional beings as a result. And it's not just me saying it. Every police department, every hospital, 
they know when the full moon is, they gear up for it because they know, they may not know why, right? But they know that people are more emotional or lunatic. And as a result, they have the manpower to support that. But understanding that, understanding the lunar cycles helps you in managing that. If you can say, oh yeah, there's a full moon coming up. It's no wonder I'm so agitated and annoyed and you know, everybody's pushing your buttons. And that's exactly what happens is all of those emotions that you suppressed, people are out there pushing all those buttons because the universe is saying, heal this, get rid of it. You don't need to hold on to this, let go of it. And so it presents this opportunity for us to release. So as you're going throughout the day, today, the next day or two, and between now and the new moon um, on the 20th, just recognize that this is a time of release. So if so something comes up, recognize, write down, acknowledge what are your feelings about it, what are, you know, everything, the situations related to it. I always look at the thesaurus and look at all the synonyms for it. It's like, oh yeah, I feel unvalued, unloved, unrespected, blah, blah, blah. And then what do you want to replace it with? Because we want to release, we want to replace. So if I'm taking something out, I want to replace it with, and if you don't know, like if, if you're feeling inadequate, obviously you want to feel valued, respected, that type honored. Um, but if you don't know, replace it with unconditional love. It's the highest vibration that will help you in, you know, just transmuting your energy and holding that higher vibe. So that helps with that question. Um, I will address the other ones as far as the winds and the chakras and how they relate to each one of our, um, the notes on a scale, the 12 notes. And anyone else have any other questions before we sign off for the day? This has been a really powerful event and I'm really grateful for each of you for participating and honoring yourself enough to be here. So this is about you. It's not about me. I'm just showing you a way of making this healing take place. So just recognize that that's that part of you that is, you know, supporting your divinity and helping you in this growing process. So thank you all so much for being here. I look forward to having you on our next one in two weeks. So we'll do this again, same bat time, same bat station, everything. So join us in two weeks on Saturday. Thanks again. Have a great weekend. Bye for now.